Hi guys, so today's video is going to be on progressive overload and I'm going to be going over what it is, how it works, how to stay consistent with it and how to monitor your progress through training with a progressive overload standpoint. And what pro progressive overload basically is, is to overload your muscles more than the previous session and expose your muscles to a new stimulus to force an adaptation to grow. And you do this through progressing your numbers, weight wise and new reps over all exercises and all rep ranges and the way you, you want to make sure this continues so you don't hit plateaus is you don't want to back off from any heavy loading and it will be hard y your back will feel like it's taking a toll you'll feel tired and you will feel fatigued but it is a weight that you can, can keep going through it and the most important thing is you don't want to drop any intensity off anything and I know I've done this in the past. For example, when I hit my four plate deadlift just for a rep, that was the goal. Uh, my heavy loading dropped off, wasn't training as hard because I was just because I was slightly less motivated for that exercise. And that's not what you want to do. You want to keep going at everything with a do or die attitude. And that's when over sessions and sessions and sessions, the results will start to show. And another thing is you want to train to what you can recover from. If you can go into the gym six times a week and be perfectly fine for your next session, usually it takes me two to three days and I'm perfectly fine. So I train push-pull legs, push-pull legs, well, push-pull legs, rest, push-pull legs. And that worked perfectly for me. And another important thing is you want to allow enough time for all your exercises, exercises to progress. And what I mean by this is you don't want to switch something out too early just because you don't like it, you're bored of it and you fancy doing something else. If you're on a program, stick to the program. And I wouldn't advise switching anything out full stop on any rotation. So I don't mean just take one exercise out of your first pull day, but leave it in the second, get rid of something completely. I wouldn't advise that just until it's basically a worn out movement pattern. You're not getting the stimulus you need from it you're not getting sore and you're just really not progressing, then I'd advise switching something out. And when it comes to monitoring progress, what you want to do is keep all your exercise details the same. And what I mean by this is small changes in exercises can make a big difference to how the muscles hit and how you're going to progress in the long run. So say you have going into a gym, you've got a working set on high bar squats. You're going for six to nine reps. So you hit six, you fail. Next week you go in and you think, oh, that close close squat wasn't as comfortable as it could have been. So I'm going to widen my stance a bit. And after a few sessions, you get wider and wider and wider. Before you know it, you're doing a wide squat over, over a close. And you're going to be stronger because you're going to be bringing in more glute to it. And this isn't you progressing. This is you just changed a whole exercise without realising. And now you're progressing numbers on an exercise that you're you shouldn't be progressing on because it shouldn't be there. And this links heavily in with form as well. You want to make sure from the very beginning, all your reps are slow and controlled, just so you can monitor how strong you actually are. And say you're on a leg extension, you've just done 15 reps, slow, controlled, and you failed on your 15th. You go in next week, you're a bit sloppy, you're bouncing your reps, you're not squeezing as hard as you could, your negatives aren't controlled and you get 20 reps. Yet again, this, you haven't progressed. You're just slacking with your form. And over time, it's gonna, it's gonna affect you because you wouldn't have progressed as much as you possibly could. So you're not gonna look as good, your strength won't be there. And another thing is you wanna be logging reps. And this is really important. I've only just started doing this and I've seen how important it actually is. When you log reps, before you even go in, you know exactly what you've got to hit, what you're aiming to hit, what you hit last week. So you go in, say you're, trying, you're doing a flat press, any press, and you're trying to hit six reps, and you hit five, you're gonna note down you've hit five, so next week you go in and you hit six, and maybe next week you get six and half a rep. And you can look back and say, right, I've come this far on this exercise. And you can also look back and say, right, this exercise hasn't progressed as much as I was trying to progress it this exercise i've hit a plateau on and it's like i said this could be where you see what you need to switch out and what you need to change to keep progressing and 
just because some, you see someone online doing four sets of 12, these, these people don't actually have a proper view to training. They're not actually going in to progress as much as they possibly could be. They don't actually go in and train with intensity. And like I say, everything, everything's different for everyone. Not everything works for everyone. So if you go in and you do one or two sets and you've just got the, the intensities there, that's enough. Like on my chest days, fly-wise on a pec deck, I do one set and I don't need any more than that on my chest done because the intensity is there. So I think it is really important as well to monitor what you are doing through a logbook. And I think over a long period of time, that is po possibly the best way to see how far you have actually come strength wise and obviously development wise.